Ladies and gentlemen, now it's too late with Alan Mosley. Guys, welcome back for another episode of It's Too Late. I am your host, Alan Mosley, joined occasionally whenever she can just deem to show up to work. It's the number one producer. Thanks, Sherry Rosary. Sherry. Sherry, where have you been? I've been in Texas, y'all. What was what was going on in Texas? Well, I visited uh, some friends um, down in Dallas Fort Worth area, Patrick Smith and the Voluntarists down there, and uh, then I went to Childerberg, which is a little mm-hmm. a little festival of mm-hmm. like minded folks down in uh, okay. Austin, and uh, I had a blast. It was such a good time. Okay, fair. Oh, well, we, we will we shall allow it this time. Oh, but uh, but I'll you, have sir. you know that you were gone long enough that we were. I, I, I mean, I can't even put into words what episodes aired while you weren't here. Um, I'm not going to name any names like Suzanne, but by <laughs> God, Suzanne comes on and we're sitting here talking about this just rage inducing, like hardcore criminal justice stuff. And she's just cool. I mean, she's just going through the data and the points and talking about her her history as an attorney and all this stuff. Really it, but the problem, though, is, is that I told a joke and she didn't laugh. Oh, <laughs> and here I, I laugh at everything, whether yeah. it's a joke or not. <laughs> you had you had pre queued up the laugh before I even reached the punchline of that monologue right there. Yeah, I'm good, man. So, before. got a couple things to talk about in the monologue before we get going. So, first of all, Sherry had told me yeah. when she came back into town that the masses, the masses just yearned for an answer. They said, whatever happened to postcards from Somalia. Are we going to get more of them postcards from Somalia? Is yes. what what were they saying, Sherry? They were saying, "Hey, do you guys do postcards anymore? What happened to postcards? Can I get a postcard from Somalia, please?" That's what they were saying. What's funny is is I have people say that about this show, but we do this show every Wednesday. <laughs> right. God, social media, man. It's big tech. Big tech uh-huh. has got their knee on my neck for nine minutes plus two and a half years. And, yeah. and you can't, I can't breathe. Governmentalities, governmentalities. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I can't, I can't confirm or deny, but I've heard through the grapevine that we might be getting ready to do another episode of postcards from Somalia. Ooh. We'll have to we'll have to see. We actually already have our topic for the next episode, but somebody who just got back into town has to finish doing their research on the topic before we can do the episode. I can't imagine who that is, but such a dumbass. <laughs> you could have terrible. You could have you could have went with oh I'm so lazy or I'll I'll get to that as soon as I can. No, it was I'm such a dumbass. I, I said she's such a dumbass because yeah, it's your co-host on on postcards, not your producer on It's Too Late. Two yeah. different, totally different people. Well, we, we wear a lot of hats around here. You have to wear a lot of hats when your operating budget is like... Yeah, zero? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> zero. I mean, we have people. a Patreon, but that basically pays just enough for me to drive to the grocery store and get a sandwich. And so, yeah. like, that's that's I pretty mean, much it. Yeah. Um, ain't seeing that. Patreon.com slash Alan the TV, by the way. But anyway, we're going to do another episode of Postcards. But until then, we're just going to have to hem-haw here on the monologue like we always do. All right. Now, even though you were out of town, you had sent me the story of, Alan, check out this. Because, well, you were in Texas, so this happened in Texas. You're you're like, you're the you're the beat. Uh, you're on the scene. You're you're walking the beat. You're beating the walk. <laughs> Whatever it is you're doing down there. I was going to say beat cop, and I was yeah, going to <laughs> Sherry Voluntary, <laughs> the renowned beat cop. <laughs> was down in Texas, and you had told me about this girl who was a valedictorian of her high school, and it, it's graduation season, and so she's going to give her little valedictorian speech. Um, mm-hmm. And you know the way this most all the schools do now is is that they have to like write their speech and they have to hand it over to the right. admin because you know you can't be letting kids go up there spouting off a bunch of nonsense that's going to get all the parents harumph harumph, you know? Right. Well, she did exactly that, didn't she? She decided to throw out her valedictorian speech, and she wanted to talk about the new abortion bill that, that I, I guess, what is it, six weeks? It's supposed to limit abortions to six weeks in the state of Texas. Um, right. So this girl, Paxton, Paxton Smith, do we have a picture of Paxton Smith? Where is uh, that at? I believe that we do. Yeah, that's right her. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Stunning and brave, I'd have to say. 
looks a little old though to be graduating high school. I mean, it's rough when the the weight of the world and you know abortion at six weeks is weighing heavy well, on you. You know, down in Texas, the sun and you know, it, I mean, it ages you. Yeah. It really does. That's true. Dry uh, down there. So this is what. She, so she's a valedictorian at Lake Highlands uh, High School in Dallas. Uh, she she goes on to talk about a speech protesting the the abortion law, and she says, "quote." I cannot give up this platform to promote complacency and peace when there is a war on my body and a war on my rights, Smith said in her speech at the graduation ceremony for Lake Highlands High School in Dallas. War on my body and a war on my rights. Mm. Mm. I tell you what, if there's... <laughs> Bravo! I, you know, I want to, I want to applaud the courage of this Paxton Smith, because if there is a lobby out there, if there's a minority that just is without a voice, that doesn't yeah. have anyone in their corner to champion their cause, it's baby killers. Right. The Susan Smiths of the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's funny is I actually had somebody in the viewer mail leave us the viewer mail question of what's your stance on abortion? We kind of got oh. to that one before we got to the viewer mail, didn't we? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's I, go ahead. I, I just I just love how they 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 couch it in these terms of we're fighting for reproductive uh -huh. rights. But there ain't nothing they don't they don't fight about, you know, women getting to actually have the babies. It's murdering the babies that they want to fight for. I, I just these people, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm. It's disgusting. And and this this girl that's so young and she thinks she's being hashtag brave. And what all I kept thinking was, okay, if she really believes in consent, if she really believes this, then how does she feel about the jab? You know, mm -hmm. is she is she down for the jab? Uh, you know, <clears throat> being like, no, her, your body, your choice with the jab? No, they never are. It's it's ridiculous. Well, it, it, it reminds me, there's this there's this really good bit that Louis C.K. did. This, mm -hmm. this was back before he got in trouble for jacking off on everybody. <laughs> Um, just just jacking off on everybody. Um, oh, hey, it's his reproductive uh, rights, man. Consensually, cons he was consensually right. dragging off on everyone. Um, right. But he did this whole bit about abortion where he starts off and he's like, so let's talk about abortion. He says, look, like, like he's not necessarily pro-life. But what he's saying is, is that you should understand your political opponents. You should understand people that are pro-life. And the reason why they're so upset is because they think you're killing a baby. Right. And then he goes, I mean, like, that's what they think. It's, it's not really killing a baby. Okay, so it's a little bit like killing a baby. <laughs> But that's what they think, though. So instead of saying, look at these crazy right wingers who believe whatever, whatever, put yourself in their shoes. They think you're literally genociding babies. And so that's right. why they're a teensy bit upset with your policy platform. And the fact that you can't even acknowledge that in good faith tells you, well, I mean, th these people don't argue in good faith, right? It's the same thing about your no. thing about the analogy of the jab. These people don't argue in good faith. They have their, they have their agenda and they're going to pursue it. And they're not, they, they are, they're perfectly happy for you to meet them halfway. They will never meet you halfway ever, ever, right. ever, ever. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's something I think it goes back to that we've talked about many times. And that is that you, you can be about issues, but holding principles is where you really have to um, be in order to have consistency and to have integrity because, you know, anybody can, can be on this or that issue, just kind of make it up as they go along, but to hold principles and hold the principle that, you know, I own me, I own my body and, um, you know, that that's inviolate and all, you know, property rights, that is where you can get consistency across the board. And these people, they just, they don't care about it. They don't care about consistency. They don't care about life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's the, where we always have to remind ourselves is that we want to hold principles. Well, I happen to know of a talk show host who said multiple times, you know, most people don't have any principles. And then mm -hmm. after I started saying that, I started having people sending me texts and messages saying, nah, -uh, right. unsubscribe. Yeah. Where's the lie, though? Right. I, so anyway, I'm, I'm moving on from that. So folks who have been following the show know, and I was talking about this with some folks last night as well, is we had Suzanne Sherman on. We were talking about that documentary, The Innocence Files, and it yeah. just it exposes it's about the men who were exonerated, but it's also it's about how they got there. 
mm-hmm. and the problems with the justice system. And and I had talked to Suzanne and I said, Suzanne, we should do a three part mini series talking about the criminal justice system so that we can really spend a whole, basically a whole episode just talking about each piece of this as yeah. opposed to trying to cram it all into one interview. And she said, that sounds like a great idea. And so I can't tell you for sure when part one will be, but we do have the reveal trailer. Go ahead and take a look at this. Oh. In the criminal justice system, law enforcement, prosecutors, and judges all represent the state, not the people. When the state gets it wrong, it is the people who suffer the costs. This is the real story. Oh, Ooh. so good. That's going to be, I, I told you this before we got going, is it's going to be really awesome, but now we have to actually deliver something awesome because everyone's <laughs> going to think, because it's, it's, it's Game of Thrones all over again. So you saw the first four oh. seasons of Game of Thrones, and you think it's going to be really good, and then if the finale is not really good, everyone goes, meh. Ugh, By oh, everyone, oh, I mean oh. me. I mean, I go. It's meh. democracy, you guys. <laughs> Bran has the best story, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we're gonna be right back with the meme of the week and the viewer mail right after this break. Don't go away. It just got me to thinking, you know, the scene in The Godfather where they've shot up Sonny and then and then Vito is like, look what they did to my boy. Yeah. Oh. That's how I feel about Jon Snow. Look That's what they good. did to my boy. Look what they I, they, they did that to ever. They <laughs> they just raped that show at the end. Uh, OK. <laughs> Here we are. What's the timestamp? We're like 17 minutes into the show. <laughs> we already did cops. I didn't yell at you for cops, but now we're on rape. Thanks so yeah. much. Sherry Voluntary has returned to the program, and now you know. Because now it's about... You're welcome. And now it's about... Now you're talking about hot Cosby's, just like that. <laughs> you're welcome. So, uh, hey, Sherry. Yes? What time is it? Meme of the week! As opposed to a slow Cosby. <laughs> you can't buy hot pockets. You can only buy cold pockets. You're expected to supply the heat yourself. Don't believe the lies. Oh, it was a conspiracy. <laughs> you know how a lot of libertarians think that there's like, what's what's that guy from Parks and Recreation? The the guy with the mustache and stuff that like he he works there, but he hates oh, the Ron government. Swanson? Ron Swanson. Like yeah. a lot of libertarians think they're Ron Swanson, but actually they're actually they're Dale Gribble. Correct. <laughs> I mean, just, where's the lie, though? It's just There's how no it is. Lie there. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's answer some viewer mail. Always forget Ron Swanson. <laughs> Probably because Parks and Recreation kind of sucked. I, I thought it was great. Yeah, was just I me. went there. You know what else sucked? The Office sucks. I didn't really watch The Office. Don't at but me. Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Come um, at me, bro. Adam Sikosen writes, Dear Alan and Sherry, Would you rather be hit by a tornado or struck by lightning? That's, that's awfully threatening, I think, to start viewer mail with. Yeah, I, I think Lyle Dorio would have something to say about this. <laughs> well, it just, if you, like, why are those the choices? Like, this is, this is, this is freaking like, like, would you rather be a Republican or a Democrat? Like, that's, right, that's right. like, why can't, it, why can't it be, or would you rather just not participate in the weather phenomenon? Right. This, my kids used to love to play this game. Like, mom, would you rather die horribly in a burning fire? Or would you rather have your skin flayed and rolled in salt? Like, I'm like. 
where my kids come from? This is disgusting. Well, well, what if it was just three toes and a thumb? <laughs> just, I'll tell you what, I actually feel sorry for people who don't watch the show every week because they come in and sometimes they're like, what the hell's going on in this program? That's, that's kind of a, that's kind of an old school. That's a throwback. Personal, yeah. That is a throwback. And yeah. I think, yeah. Oh, it's good. Uh, for, for my friends, Bolden and Meharry, hey, I'm working on a project. Hit me up. Um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, Andrew Avery writes, Dear Alan and Sherry, if you start your turn north of the Mason-Dixon line and you complete it south of the Mason-Dixon line, was it a U-turn or a y'all turn? You know, I actually don't say y'all very much. I mean, I'm, I'm from here. I've lived in the South my whole life. I don't say y'all all the time. I, I brought it back, right? Oh, you're bringing I didn't say it. I, I did. You're bringing like it back? Like sexy. Okay. Yeah, I brought it back. Uh, cause I, I love it. And I like to push it in people's faces, like, because they assume that if you're from the South, you're stupid. And I'll, so mm -hmm. I'll y'all all over them all day. You know, Louis CK likes to push it in people's faces, yeah. but only, <laughs> only consensually. Yes, indeed. Um, but women. Jonathan Carranza writes, what is your op opinion on abortion and abortion laws? See, okay. So Jonathan, cause I, I know Jonathan, Jonathan missed the first of the show. He's just now got the <laughs> notification and said, oh, shit, the show's on. I better share it. Right. Jonathan, right. go back to the monologue. Um, yeah. Debbie Smith writes, dear Alan and Sherry, is the legal profession necessary as I am getting my father's affairs in order, finding a lot of BS just for the sake of money? Hi, uh, is it an attorney worth $300 an hour? Should the legal system be bundled like medical procedures are? How about getting rid of 85% of it? I know that that's more than one question. First of all, yes, that is a lot more than one question. Um, yeah. And second of all, so no, someone who believes in the market would say that a an attorney should be worth exactly as much as they can charge and get away with. Now that might be um, that might be modified by the fact that you have licensing laws that say that only people who go through school and go to law school and pass their bar exam are allowed to practice. If you had people on the street who could just do nothing at all but look at, say, tax law for, for small businesses, and that's all they ever did, because you know a lot of attorneys, they do that. They really just specialize mm -hmm. in one particular area of law. And, exactly. and, and also a lot of attorneys are just, they're just pencil pushers. And they, it's, not, it's not like every attorney, like every person who goes to law school doesn't go then on to law and order and right. go in front of a judge and argue and, right. and, and do tear jerkers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So they should be making as much money as the market can stand, but that ultimately would come down if people who wanted to specialize in an area of law and didn't have to have pass a bar exam could do that. And that would right. still be on you. If you wanted to hire the attorney that went to UCLA, you're gonna have to pay for that. If you wanna hire uh, Alan and Sherry's Law Shack, then, Burton Ernie School of Law in. Then we're going to charge less. Like, look, if they're going to charge you three hundred, Debbie, I'll do it for two ninety five an hour. Ooh, yeah. How about that? Yeah, and I think too, you have to remember that it's not really a free market for lawyers. Like the laws and the people who make them are made to, like you were saying, so that only lawyers who have gone through their rigmarole and have their special blessing of. Uh, the state get to practice. Otherwise, I mean, people at H and R Block do it all the time. They they do people's taxes, right? And so that's all involving the law. I mean, or what are they? Uh, yeah, I can't remember what they're called. Very good taxes. Paralegals. You, paralegals. You, you said taxes, taxes, so your mic is muted for three minutes. Law <laughs> uh, <laughs> Diria writes, dear Alan and Sherry, if a post has zero reach and no one can view it, does it exist? <laughs> yes <laughs> it does exist it so <laughs> i i stared i stared into the void and it was me i i, right. I am in social media purgatory where i am yeah. neither i am neither banned nor reached and i just sit yeah. there alone with my post right That's or it's it, it's one of those star trek episodes with like a multiverse where mm -hmm. different things are playing out and you're flipping back and forth. So in your timeline, yes, they exist. But in other people's timeline, it doesn't exist till days later. In apparently. my timeline, Captain America came to get one of the Infinity Stones. And now we don't have any more reach on our social media posts until he brings it back. <laughs> kind of selfish, quite frankly, if you think about right. it. Right. Yeah. 
Damn. Uh, Kim Brown writes, Dear Alan and Sherry, do y'all have any fun summer plans? Sherry, do you have any fun summer plans? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, yes. I already did them. <laughs> there you, so Sherry says no. I say um, yes, but only if you guys go to patreon.com slash Alan Mosley TV. <laughs> um, Bob Smiley writes, Dear Alan and Sherry. He actually says, Dear A&S. Bob, that's lazy, I think. A and S. He actually wrote I "Dear A." Like you can't, you can't even, you can't even write out Alan. It's a four-letter name, for God's sakes. Yeah. You could have at least wrote "Dear Alan and Friend." <laughs> and woman. Dear, Dear Alan, Alan and, and this week's producer. Why don't the people of these states know that they live in a communist country? Because they live in a fascist country. Um. There you go. Uh, Darren Neal writes, Dear Alan and Sherry, is it possible we're in the Matrix? I feel like it's not possible that we're in the Matrix because, like, look, if this was the Matrix and I'm going to live in a unfree world, then I at least want to be the guy that gets to eat the big juicy steak and tell the agent exactly. that ignorance is bliss, right? Like, I'm not getting the steak or getting to live be free. What the hell happened? All we're getting is rape. Yeah, I feel like your three minutes isn't up. <laughs> I, feel like, I, I feel like that. I mean, how long has this show been on? J Jesus. Uh, yeah. Um, forever. Jesus has left this rapes place. In. <laughs> Rachel Watson, two, two, two Cosby's in. Rachel Watson <laughs> Kennerly writes, uh, Rachel Watson Kennerly didn't write anything about Bill Cosby. I just want to clarify that. Dear Alan and whoever he randomly chooses to co-host the show with him. Now, Rachel, <laughs> that was because Sherry was out of town and I already yeah. apologized to the audience. Yeah. Um, what are the must-haves in your bug out bag, Sherry? What's uh, just do one? What's your number one must-have in your bug out bag? Um, uh, ammunition. Um, toilet paper. I think. <laughs> right. No, I. If we've learned anything, it's that toilet paper is yes. the most golden of commodities. In the game Fallout, they all trade like their currency is bottle caps. So caps mm. are like pennies, right? So in, in, in our, in our dystopian hellscape, it's going to be toilet paper. Sheets, but only one because Cheryl Crow said only use one at a time. Remember that? <laughs> okay. I, I know for a fact your three minutes isn't up. Just <laughs> Marilyn Wilmowski of Liberty Late Night writes, Dear Alan and Sherry, what, if any, extracurricular activities did you participate in when you were in school? Sherry, did you do any extracurricular activities when you were in school? Yes. Now, we're, I, I, I need to clarify this is school-sponsored, not just whatever the hell oh. you were up to. Oh, okay. 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 I, was, I was in band for a little bit. You were a band geek. Jesus. I was in the band in middle school. <sighs> yeah. And then I was in, you're going to really love this one. Um, when, the one I really loved was I was on the special teams in ROTC. <laughs> So I was real deep in, yo. <laughs> you know what? You know what they say about people who were in band, don't you? They play instruments. They blow. <laughs> I mean, they are faggots. That is for sure. Um, <laughs> Tim Weissong writes that we're the platform just like that. Right. Tim Weissong writes, dear Alan and Sherry, is there any value in keeping a dream journal? Um, I don't think there's any value in keeping a dream journal, but I remember in a creative writing class I once had where we had to write a post about if you could have a VCR, this was back when VCRs existed, if you could have a VCR that recorded your dreams, would you want one if that also meant that other people would then get to see what you've been dreaming? Ooh. Yikes. No. Would you, would you, you wouldn't do it? Not if other people got to see it, no. Y'all... Y'all don't even know what goes on in my head and my dreams. You don't want to. John McCain's already dead, Sherry. Just, that that just, is true. Just, lead, just let him lie. I'd like to relive the, the death of John McCain when I can. Last question this week. Uh, Suzanne Sherman, why are half of my questions from people who have literally been here in the last few weeks? <laughs> have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Suzanne Sherman writes, Dear Alan and whomever, Suzanne! <laughs> Suzanne's throwing shade at you, but it's but it's because she she knows that she's no Sherry. But she loves me, and I love her. Uh -huh. That's all that matters. Yeah, love in the sense of abortion, right? 
Yeah, she's she's gonna she's my yeah. most essential item in my bug out bag, actually. And it, <laughs> actually, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> my most essential item is the keys to Suzanne's ranch. That is correct. Right. <laughs> uh, dear Alan and Sherry, is this uh, what's wrong with comparing apples to oranges? Is this a free country or not? Um. So I I feel like that question is really an affront to Andrew Avery. It's Ooh. we only have one pun a week and. I mean, that wasn't really a pun. It was more of an attempt to hijack the program. And, uh, cute. and I'm yeah. not, not going to allow it. But I, you know, I honestly don't even like apples or oranges that much. It should be, let's compare strawberries to watermelon. Oh, I don't like watermelon. You're not, you're not a Southerner. That, I know, that's what my mom says. <laughs> I'm so glad your mother and I have so much in common. I know, y'all both Guys, hate me. Guys, we're going to be back with Eric Haler, the host of the Rebel with the Calls podcast, right after this break. Don't go away. Your ad could be playing right now, reaching thousands of potential customers. Sadly, it's not, but it could be. Find out how to be an advertised sponsor for It's Too Late with Alan Mosley. Email us at info at alanmosley.tv. Guys, welcome back to the show. Our guest this evening is the host of the Rebel with a Cause podcast. It's been around since July of 2017. It started out as just an angry man yelling at people inside of his car, and it has evolved into being one of the most provocative talk shows in the Liberty community. Eric Taylor, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. You, did you did you I, like I that feel introduction? Like I'm still yelling at people in my car. Yeah, that was awesome. Oh well, <laughs> you're you're very welcome. Well, I I want to I want to get this out of the way before we get any further ahead i was looking on your website and you've got this tagline here that says a conversational podcast about being free in an unfree world that's got that's got a little harry brown uh, little in there is yeah. was, was was he one of your uh one of your inspirations yes uh harry brown as we like to call him the goat the greatest of all time he <laughs> was a uh, he was a great guy uh, especially uh his little uh, article after 9 11 which really yes. kind of pushed everybody over the edge mm. so yeah fantastic dude yeah, absolutely. Well, since we kind of already opened that uh, can of worms, uh, we'll we'll just kind of start there. Uh, introduce yourself a little bit to the audience for people that may not know you, and and a little bit about kind of what are the most important issues to you, and and tell us a little bit about uh, some of your influences. I'm not going to ask you the cliche, "How did you come to Liberty?" I'd rather I'd rather <laughs> talk a little bit more about some of the people that inspired you in that in that direction. Well, uh, like you said, my name's Eric, uh, host of the Rebel with a Cause podcast. Uh, yeah, so like you said, I was doing it since uh, 2017. I was just kind of uh, one of those guys who would always get together with his friends, and we'd just sit there and bullshit about the news and everything. And uh, uh, finally, I got bit by the bug and had to go you know, buy a microphone and record in my car for a little bit. And I eventually came around to doing the, the conversational type as what I call the uh, the back porch episodes, where it just sounds like a couple of guys sitting on the back porch having having some beer, talking about stuff. Uh, so as far as the influences, yeah, you picked up on uh, Harry Brown there, uh, Ron Paul, of course, uh, and then uh, here recently, it's uh, been getting really into the uh, some of the lesser known uh, anarchist types out there. So like the Emma Goldmans and mm -hmm. the uh, <laughs> and some of the some of the ancient ones from the 1920s and 30s and everything. So it's been doing a lot of reading. So. Well, you you brought up that a word right there, the the anarchists that are your influences. Uh, so yeah. so do you do you self identify as someone who believes in anarchism, or are you are you just a statist commie? Well, you know, there's no government like no government, right? So. Sure, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been kind of fun pointing out to uh, my little normie friends or the statist muggles, as Kinsella likes to call them. It's like, uh, well, you, you know realize what the problem started all this was the government. So, you know, adding more government to the problem that they started is not really going to help. So, <clears throat> but it's been kind of fun watching the people who voted for Biden thinking they were going to get, you know, free chicken and everything now kind of realizing, oh, he's Bush. He's George W. Bush all over mm -hmm. again. Oh, no. Well, yeah, exactly right. Is that what 
what's so interesting about Biden is is if you if you're evaluating, well, how did we wind up here? Because Biden, of course, Biden's a million years old. He had been in politics for thousands of years, and yep. I mean, anyone <laughs> who's been keeping up with American politics, even even just since the two thousands, you've seen Biden on the stage before, and he never, he never really had a lot of popular support, right? Like he was always yeah. heavily overshadowed by the the by the Clintons and the Obamas of the world, and so you know if you had told me a few years ago that oh biden's gonna make another big run at it. i would have said oh come on there's no way he's been there done that now he's an old old timer there's his jello brain is literally slipping out of his ears there's no way we're gonna wind up with biden and yet here we are so are do you feel like that that's because there's been some kind of cultural shift or is that because he was the guy that ran against orange man yeah, you know, that was all orange man bad, of course. So it's like anybody, you know, vote for anybody, you know, vote blue, no matter who. <laughs> Some of the slogans that were being thrown around, like by very serious uh, lefty progressive types. And I'm like, are, are you are you sure this was the guy you've been railing against, uh, you know, the cop? And then he gets the vice president, Kamala, who's also a sure. cop. Yeah. And it's like you look at him, it's like, why, why are you guys doing this? This is just this is just stupid. And uh, then, of course, you know. The guy's got no hands, so at least none that we can verify that actually exists. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> Unless they're touching kids. Well, mm -hmm. he's yeah. Biden's more of a. I, I think Trump is a toucher. I think Biden's a sniffer. Yeah, I think. <laughs> but you know who am, who am I to judge? Uh, as as Sherry and I <laughs> say all the time on this program, look, guys, I know that it is a tall mountain to climb, but it, I feel like it's worth it to you to not bother children. Just don't bother children. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you kind of get that warning when you go over to the creepy uncle's house. It's like, okay, kids, stay close to me. Don't get caught in a room alone with them. You know. Well, Ugh. so what's funny? You were talking about the the vote blue, no matter who stuff, and I remember that, and I and I I, I remember that, but I also remember thinking they're saying that, but you can see the type of vitriol they point at people like Tulsi Gabbard, and that tells me it's obvious it's not blue no matter who, because if by some crazy right. chance Tulsi Gabbard was leading in the polls, no, they clearly aren't voting blue no matter who. Uh, but yeah, then it, yeah, well, she's technically not really blue, right? She's red, you know, because she was a Russian asset. Well, yeah, no, no kidding, right? So it, <laughs> what, what's funny is, is that uh, Tulsi, because I mean, and I'm certainly no fan of Tulsi, she's a socialist, but... She, it, depending on where you're looking at the political spectrum and what issues are very important to you, you know, she's, she's pretty, pretty damn far left. Um, but yes. You, and, and, and what's funny about that is, is that in, I, I don't know how this evolved into a modern political conversation as opposed to like us talking about our uh, libertarian type things. But, <laughs> but there was a lot, you might remember there was a lot of the far left, like Bernie AOC types that were not happy with the establishment DNC and they didn't really want Biden. And you're like, well, hey, this is kind of a house divided. You would think those people would love Tulsi because Tulsi's pretty far left. She's a hell of a lot further left than Biden is. Biden's a, right. Biden's a century. Biden's Trump. He literally is he's literally donald trump with a different suit yeah. and yet yeah just big labor democrat that's it and then and then you know fast forward just a few months and you see all of this hate and vitriol for that far left wing and then you see this the the establishment dnc just it's like they i mean i i i, I give credit where it's due man they can wave that magic wand and that machine gets to churn in and they just consolidate and all of a sudden you have a president joe biden but you uh, i'll turn it back to you you had mentioned kamala you know the problem with yeah. voting blue no matter who is is you're willing to accept whatever it takes to get trump out and in this case what it took was one of the most evil vile cops known to man when they just spent all summer rioting right. against police. Yeah. Yeah. Literally kept innocent people in jail because it would quote, set a bad precedent to let them out. You know, it's uh, <laughs> just a God awful person Yeah, and stupid on top of it. So that it's a wonderful combination that we find ourselves with. I hear she's pretty good in the sack though. <laughs> uh, I debates out on that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know, people, I, far be it for me to judge people whose heyday has already passed. I'm not trying to be ageist on this program. Um, <laughs> well, you have me. So. Well, well, that's the she's funny. She's starfish the whole time, but she's the best damn starfish there is. <sighs> Jesus Christ. 
Well, that's the, you know, that's the funny thing about you talking about people just intellectually not being particularly impressive. And I've definitely heard, I've read things and I've heard stories from more than a different, different sectors across the political spectrum that have said, look, Joe Biden's been around forever. Of course, everyone, people who have a memory farther than five minutes remember, look, this was the serial plagiarist who never had an accomplishment Mm. in his life. At least right. until he wrote the crime bill that is, uh, when I say accomplishment, mm-hmm. that's really carrying yeah. a lot of water in that sentence. This guy has <laughs> never really accomplished anything as a net positive in his life, and he's intellectually unimpressive. And, and Kamala's very similar. Like, yes, I, I mean, you know... <sighs> If she, people like her and the constitutional scholar Obama just, just go to show you that, look, anybody can get a law degree these days, right? So yeah. if that's really, really mean much. Yeah, like that's really all she has to hang her hat on, too, other than, of course, the vile and terrible things she's done. These are, these are not particularly impressive human beings. Even if we're being very generous and we're not talking about our differences politically, they're just not particularly impressive individuals. And yet, here we are. Yeah. Here we are. So what is so does that say something the about world. them, or does that say something <laughs> about the voting public then? Uh, uh, the voting public, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I mean, you look like you have so much sympathy for them. Yeah, yeah. You know, being the former elections chair for the Louisiana Part- Libertarian Party, let me tell you, let me tell you something about the voting public. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag autism. Wait, hold on, hold, hold on. You, you, you've opened up that. You've, you've uncorked that bottle. You can't close it. So yeah. actually, yeah. Tell I, us a I little can. bit about that, Eric. Yeah. So it was kind of funny. They, uh, they asked this anarchist at the LP convention in Louisiana in 2016 if he wanted to become the, uh, the elections chair. So they first asked me. It was like, well, what do you think about elections? I was like, well, you know, I don't think they should exist. That shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> uh, he's like, well, would you like to be the elections chair? And I said, yeah, sure. Why not? I can, <laughs> I can, I can answer emails, I guess. And so uh, I got it. It was like a 42 to one. Somebody voted Noda on me. It wasn't quite as bad as Nick Sarwark, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was the elections chair for about two years, and I was fielding emails from people who wanted to run, and uh, yeah, some crazy ideas of what people think libertarians are. We had a guy from New Orleans who tried to run on a reparations ticket where he wanted to make every white person in the uh, city of New Orleans pay reparations to black people in New Orleans. And I was like, well, I mean, if you can prove <laughs> you know, ownership, I guess, maybe you can maybe do something there, but that's not the Libertarian Party. Yeah, and so the rest of them, I was like, yeah, you're not going to win. You might as well just go out there and educate as much as possible if you want to win. I mean, go join a Republican. This is mostly a red state, so, but yeah, well, um, there it is. I'm I'm going to, I've, I've taken mental note of that. This is one of those situations where we don't have enough time left in this segment to go down a really, really deep rabbit hole. So I'm going to save that for the right. next segment. So we're going to, we're going to come back to that. But in the, in the meantime, I'm looking at your bio here on the website and, and I said a really brief part of it there in the introduction where your, yeah. your show evolved from more of it being, you know, you have things that you want to get off your chest. And, and then it and evolved into, well, I'm going to have guests. I'm going to talk to other people. I'm going to, I'm going to have a platform instead of just rant. Right. I'm going to build a platform. So how, so at, where, uh, Eric, how stupid, how stupid can you be that you want to have a platform <laughs> where you invite just these autistic, socially awkward libertarian <laughs> types to come on? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and once you've done yeah. fielded that very loaded question, who are, who are some of the favorite people you've had a chance to talk to? <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, nobody, nobody enjoys uh, misery as much as I do, and misery loves company. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, having uh, having folks on, and it kind of started with a couple of friends around here in Louisiana, just kind of get them on here and there. And then I was like, well, no, I actually kind of like the the conversation format a little bit better. So, let me start reaching out to some of my uh, some of my buddies on uh, Twitter and mm-hmm. see if I can get them on. So, yeah, I got to, you know. Uh, Pete back when he was uh, using the Mance Raider moniker. So I don't even know if Pete Quinones is actually his real name, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had one of the guys on from actual Anki, uh, the movie review thing. And, uh, and uh, my, my latest episode was something completely out of the left field. It was a guy who studies astrology being loaded in the Bible. So that was, that was kind of a fun hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, so just oh, something just completely different. Yeah. Your favorite guest of all time. Uh, of course, Miss Sherry, a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so so that's interesting. So let me let me ask you a follow up right there. Is that as as someone from 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 a show host to another, 
how much of your show do you feel like is sort of kind of like signed off for of well i i there there's important issues in the world and i feel like they need to be addressed and i feel like i have something to say so i want to talk about those issues versus how much of your show is well it's my show so it should be under a reflection of some hobbies and interests and things i have it doesn't have to just be all serious politics all the time how do you how do you kind of balance that out yeah, I mean, that just goes with the conversation. I try to, like, weave it in and out. Um, for the most part, uh, people will just bring up topics naturally. And uh, we can just riff on that for a little bit, so you just kind of see where it takes us. I don't bring a notepad or a pencil or anything to jot anything down as far as notes go. Uh, I think before I might hit a couple of things, but that's about it. And then uh, as far as balancing with stuff that I'm doing, I'll, I'll kind of weave it in there. If it feels natural to go that way, we can do do that. Um but most of the time, I mean, I'm pretty much here just to kind of have fun. So if you're going to tell me a joke, I'll yes and that joke and see if we can make it a little bit funnier. <laughs> so except for when I'm doing like weird episodes with uh, astrotheology and all that. So <laughs> it's, have you I'll, I'll ask you this last one before we take our, our next commercial break. Have you have you ever had a situation and, and and I'm not trying to say that this happened in your last episode, but have you ever had a situation where you had someone on and it actually went 180 degrees a different direction than you anticipated to the point where you're like, well, actually, I'm, I'm kind of left speechless. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where to go with this because this has gotten so far off the trail of what is sort of our standard fare. Uh, trying to think, was there any time that that actually happened? Um, yeah, there was like a, there was a few episodes like in the very beginning. I was uh, sitting there recording with uh, my friend Will, who's the uh, – was the chairman for the Livingston Parish uh, LP. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, would start on a topic and then all of a sudden we would just end somewhere else at the very end. And so who's like, you're sitting in the middle of a restaurant. So now you got people like listening to us at the restaurant too. So it was a little bit of a crowd aspect going on with that too. So <laughs> it was, it was just kind of like those early episodes where I'm just sitting there thinking, I was like, man, we, we didn't really want to go there, but I guess we went there. So <laughs> but I'll, I'm, I, I lied. I'll, I'll ask you one more. Uh, so how, yeah, how yeah. many, how many episodes have you done? Uh, I think I stopped counting numbers there for a while, but if, when I look at my feed that says about 200, so probably about that much. You've done about 200 episodes. Do you ever, do you ever go back and listen to any of it at all? Not, not like as a, like an ego and hubris thing, but more of as a, like just sort of evaluating how far it's come from episode one to episode 200. Do you ever go back and look at it? Yeah, I've listened to every single episode at least two or three times. So okay. uh, a few times during the, during the editing process, and then uh, it's actually subscribed to on my phone. So I'll go back and listen, kind of how everyone else would hear it. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes I'll, I'll say, "Well, that was kind of dumb. I shouldn't have said it that way," you know. And I might take a little note in the phone for for later on. So it's not enough of an ego or hubris thing. I was like, "Oh man, li listen how brilliant and funny I am." <laughs> But, uh, that's why Just I listen. Never done that. <laughs> well, speaking of how brilliant and funny you are, we're going to be back with more from Eric Haler, Rebel with a, with a Cause podcast, right after this break. Guys, stick around. <laughs> If you're enjoying tonight's show, consider supporting the program by becoming a member of our Patreon. That's over at patreon.com slash Alan Mosley. <laughs> you know, Sherry, you, you missed it uh, when Dave and Mary were here while you were out of town. Dave had to do the huh. And it was, Aww. it was one of those deals where it was just that half a second too late. And, and you know what? It was endearing. <laughs> I enjoyed yeah, it. I'm, David, it's my job to be awkward. Okay. All right. You can't take it. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the show. We're back here with Eric Haler, Rebel with a Cause podcast. So I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to pull a Jen Saki and circle back on you, Eric. Uh, we're yeah, talking circle back. Okay. We were talking a little bit about uh, you working as an election guy with the LP and dealing with candidates who were saying, hey, we might want to run. And, and then you sort of getting a, an eye full and an ear full of what these people, their potential platforms would be. So let's just go ahead and get into that conversation of who is and isn't a real libertarian. 
Um, <laughs> so, so I'll start with an easy one. Do you do you really even use the term libertarian anymore, like for yourself? Uh, it kind of depends on who I'm talking to. If I am talking at work and someone asks uh, what party affiliation I have or what my views are, I was like, well, you know, I'm a little bit libertarian on this subject. You know, I think the government's a little bit overreached and I'll, I'll try to couch it in that term because I know that's the term that they may be familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm talking to like my friends like you and Sherry and everything, it's like anarchist without adjectives, really. So. Yeah, I so I like that too. I, I also like the anarchist without adjectives thing. And and really, when people if if you push me and say, well, what wh what's the deal with libertarianism is or libertarian <laughs> is that so first of all, Jesus, where, where do I begin? <laughs> yeah. uh, but second of all, it's that I definitely I'm definitely not one of these people that's like, well, we gotta fight to maintain the meaning of our language and blah blah blah. Because I definitely feel like, look, people popular no, usage. We lost classical liberal yes. a long time ago. Po so. Popular usage is what makes the meaning of words. That's what words do. They convey meaning, and if that's what people mean it to mean, that's what it means to mean. And there's just right. there's just so many different elements to what self-described libertarians ascribe to that I'm just sitting here shaking my head like I, I don't know where you arrived at that conclusion or why you so so I'm, I'm going to turn the floor over to you so that sounds like something that you've you've had a little bit of experience with yeah so uh down here in Louisiana it's it's a very red state so uh, mm -hmm. when I was talking to my educational uh candidates I, I would tell them, I was like, you're going to have to kind of meet them where they are. So if you were talking in a blue area, you're going to have to adopt speech that is normally reserved for the Democrats. Uh, you're going to have to be a better Democrat than a Democrat. You're going to have to, uh, you know, talk about social justice is going to come from property rights and yada, yada. And if they're in a heavily red district, then they're going to have to they're going to have to take up those Republican talking points. It was like, look, we all want to be uh, safe and secure. And, you know, we understand that police are having a problem. You know, here's some things that we can do to to reform that institution. Uh, just trying to get the education of it's it's all about you know non-aggression and property rights and try to try to educate a little bit more. Maybe uh, plant that seed that's gonna just gnaw at somebody until they go looking the stuff up later for themselves. Uh, so yeah, it was just it was you know messaging is always just gonna be a problem with libertarians because we're not overtly uh, ex. Uh, what's that word? not introvert, extroverted like yeah. I am. So it's like, yeah, you got to get yourself out there, you know, and I know you don't want to talk to people and you would rather just, you know, send a text message when you can. But, uh, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, politicking is all about people ticking. So the reason why mm -hmm. AOC won her district was she got on a pair of shoes and she went out there with a clipboard and she talked to her constituents. So, yeah, the other Democrat didn't do that. And that's why he got, you know, primaried by some 28-year-old bartender <laughs> actor. You know, that's what, uh, yeah, so it's, it's just messaging. It, it, it's always going to be a problem. Well, I know it's, it's I, I know that that's something that Scott Horton talks about is that you attack the right from the right and you attack the left from the left, but partly because you're, you're showing them up, right? You're showing like, look, if you really were on the right, you would believe X, Y, and Z, but it's also speaking, yeah. speaking language that they understand, like, you know, talking yeah. in their language. Um, I, but I feel like like, I, I know that messaging is a big thing for a lot of people. It, it, messaging is not really a thing for me because I, I, I don't give two shits about elections. I, I, I've told many people right. if I was running for LP, my platform is to abolish the Libertarian Party. That's my platform if I'm running for LP. <laughs> um, but, oh, well, you and uh, Theodore from a crowdfunded government would just get right along because he wanted to run for the chair of the party just to, just to dissolve it. So <laughs> Yeah, fa fantastic. I mean, that's I want to dissolve all political parties, and why would I not just strike at the one I can eat most easily achieve? my goals yeah. but but on on that similar topic is is that besides messaging i think that again when you're dealing particularly in the political sphere the fact of the the fact of the matter is we don't live in a free society and we do live in a world where there is going to be voting and there is going to be first past the post and, and these types of things and so it is a numbers game and so for the people who obsess over winning the numbers game, that's where you get into this big tent versus little tent conversation. And then that's where yeah. you also, unfortunately, and I'm not, 
I have my own opinions on that, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm less trying to express my opinions on that and more just to say when you open up that tent to be bigger and bigger and bigger because you're trying to drive membership and you're trying to get more people registered, what inevitably also happens is, is you're dealing with quantity over quality, right? And then you wind up right. with all of these people who, God bless them, they might be desperately looking for an anti-establishment choice. But they don't really, they've never read the literature. They don't really understand the principles. No. These are these are exactly, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you here. These are exactly the people that voted for Ron Paul in 8 and 12 and then turned around and voted for Bernie in 2016. They were really just looking for the, the outsider. They never really got it. And that's what I'm afraid yeah. you end up with, with all this big, big tent messaging type stuff. Yeah, uh, everyone wants to be able to build a 900-pound gazebo by themselves, uh, but unfortunately, we all can't do that because we only weigh 40 pounds. So this is a little Twitter reference to, to earlier today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so as far as uh, getting a whole bunch of people in the party, I, I was at the 2018 uh, convention, and uh, there was a guy there in a uh, in a northern Civil War uniform drinking moonshine the whole time. And uh, I was sitting there like, trying to ask him questions about stuff. And he really didn't know what libertarians were. He just knew that they weren't Democrats. And I guess that was enough for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that like, a... well, how did you find this? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the thing for me that always stops me from engaging with that community too much is that you, you, you sometimes will kind of extend an olive branch out there and you'll say, well, okay, let's, let's find common ground, right? That's what you do in politics. Let's, let's, let's build a coalition. Let's find common ground. But I feel like, dare I say, if we're going to get into the conversation of what is real and not real libertarianism, there's certain things that to me, there's no wiggle room. And maybe for different people, it's different issues. But like, for instance, if you're not staunchly anti-war, anti-interventionist, anti-empire, if you're not that, then you can be good on everything else. I just assume not have any community with you whatsoever. Do you, I mean, does that make sense? Like there's certain issues that yeah. there's just no bend. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, that's like the most important thing that we got going is an, being anti-war, and uh, I, I will probably quantify this a little bit. Uh, it's not that I'm anti-war because if you bring the war to my doorstep, I'm definitely going to fight, but it's the anti-imperial -imp, uh, wars that we have going on, where we're starving a population in Yemen just because you know Obama wanted to you know quote placate the Saudis. Uh, you know we're waging a drug war which has put an entire generation of black youths in prison for no other reason than owning a plant or ingesting mm -hmm. that uh, substance. Mm -hmm. You know you know because prison rape is such a good resolution for uh, substance abuse problems. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah. If if you can't even at least be anti-war and maybe not even completely there, but at least you're kind of seeing it was like, yeah, you know, maybe having 900 bases overseas is probably not the best way to defend this country. I, 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 all right, that's a start. I can at least work with that. You know, but people that go out and, and Tulsi Gabbard is guilty of this, by the way, mm -hmm. she is totally on, on board for the war on terror. She just thinks that, you know, Afghanistan may have taken a little bit too long, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's anti-war to a point, but I mean, that's at least something that I can work with. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that actually just reminded me. I know everyone's favorite uh, former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson. Um, he, he, he had caused a little stir uh, on Twitter. Yes, on, yeah, he had caused a little stir on Twitter earlier today because someone someone had jokingly made a tweet. It's supposed to be one of those things. It's a joke, but it's also thought provoking. Had jokingly made a tweet of, you know, they should legalize child labor again. You know, you should be able to have 12 and 14 year olds go to work. And of course, what they were getting at was, is twofold. One, you know, let's talk about vocations. Let's talk about trades and, and apprenticeships and things like that. Uh, but right. also two, that's let's let's abolish the public school system like that for me i know a lot of people are big on war and i am too i know, I know a lot of people are big on an, being anti-federal reserve and i am too for me my biggest issue has always been education you it's it's yes. that you send your kids to caesar don't be surprised when they come back as romans you we like if i if i could wave a magic wand i've said this before if i could wave a magic wand and one of these tentacles of leviathan was gone for me it would be education and yeah, yet, Gary Johnson, right there. Gary Johnson's response to that was, I'm sorry, but no, this isn't good messaging for libertarians. We support the schools. Like, Jesus yes. Christ. Uh, yeah, right. there's a reason why people are mad at you, Gary. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is called total lack of self-awareness.
Yeah, and and of course, you know what, you know, being being soft on messaging and being supportive of things like yeah. you know major government Mr. institutions Mr. and public schools. <laughs> yeah, like because that because that's been so successful, right? Like Gary would say, "Well, I do this because I'm trying to build a coalition." Oh, well, you've done such a fantastic job. Am I right? Yeah. Look at all the libertarians. <laughs> right. Yeah, bang up job there, dude. <laughs> Well, so what's a so we we talked a, just a really quick there. We talked about war and we talked about education. What are what's maybe one or two other major topics that you feel like look, if you're not good on this, then I'm sorry, you're not really a member of this community. Like you think you are, but you're not really a member of this community if like like so for, like cuz I know you briefly mentioned drugs. Like look, if you think people should be shot because they smoke weed, I'm sorry, you're not a libertarian. You don't get the basic right. concept of this philosophy. Yeah, this this is a uh, yeah. The drug war has been one of those things that I, I have really like almost come to blows with uh, with certain Republicans out there, uh, because you know it's like, well, the guy's gonna break into my house and steal my PlayStation. I was like, okay, prosecute him for the breaking and entering and the theft of your PlayStation. You know, there's already laws against that. It, if a guy's gonna smoke crack in his yard and he's not bothering anybody else, then what harm is done other than to himself? And the last time I checked, trying to parent other adults is a really, really bad idea. And it has really, really bad outcomes. Yeah, ex exactly right. So I, I'll, I'm going to I'm going to ask you one more and then we're going to get ready to wrap up. Um, OK, now getting back with your best shot, get, getting back into the more, you know, hardcore anarchist type of libertarianism. Of course, I would, I believe, I agree with David Gordon when David Gordon says you, you have to be an anarchist to be a libertarian. There's no such thing as libertarians who are not. That's, that's hardcore right there. I know that right. that'll, I know that'll <laughs> make some people upset that might have heard that on the show, but I'm sorry, stay mad. Um, yeah. but specifically as it pertains to the more deeply philosophical anarchism perspective or, or that wing of the liberty community, do you really feel like that section has seen some major growth say in the time that you've been doing your show or do you feel like a lot of that is just the ebb and flow of politics of oh it's an election season there'll be there'll be 10,000 people come in because they want to vote for Gary and then six months later they'll all be gone do you really feel like in your heart of hearts there's a movement that's growing or that's just mostly talk well uh I like to microdose white pills wherever I can so uh just since I started doing podcasting, mm -hmm. there has been so many more kind of liberty, you know, adjacent liberty related uh, podcast out there. And so there's a lot more than there used to be. Uh, and then the big one that just happened was Michael Malice's book, The Anarchist Handbook. Yes. Which like shot up to like number two overall mm -hmm. and he, with no marketing whatsoever. And even he's confused about it. So, I mean, you now have people that are reading some of that old literature and are now starting to put two and two together. So, it, I mean, as far as white pills go, I mean, that's that's the horse pill of them all. So it, it's, yeah, I, I think it's going to get pretty interesting in the next couple of years to see kind of where everything goes. On that note, uh, Eric, where can people go to support you and hear more from Rebel with a Cause? Uh, well, I mean, if you want to check out what I'm doing, uh, you can always uh, hit up on the website. It's uh, rebelwithcausepodcast.com. Uh, you can always check me out on Twitter because I basically live there. That's uh, at Eric the Red 79. Uh, my name's Eric. I have red hair. I was born in 1979, kind of built like a Viking, so it all kind of fits. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, I do have a Patreon, subscribe star, float, and all that other stuff. Uh, that's all linked on every episode, so you can always check those show notes for that. Oh, and also... Uh, YouTube bit shoot in uh, Odyssey as well. If you want to see the video versions of uh, my conversations, Eric, we'll get you out of here on this one. Okay, thank you. If a smoothie is just some type of ground up fruit with sugar, <laughs> then is yes. ketchup a smoothie? Ketchup is a smoothie, and it is rather delicious as a smoothie. Eric, you're a real libertarian. Congratulations, that is the right <laughs> answer. I would also like to posit that a pop tart is in fact a ravioli. Indeed it is. This this is yep. a man who has truly delved deep into the philosophical <laughs> underpinnings of of our movement right there. He knows us. Eric, knows thank it. you so much guys. We're going to be right back to wrap up the show right after this break. Don't go away. Hi guys, it's Alan here, and I want to take a moment to let you know about one of our supporters who started a new business. Laura Moreau sells 50 different health and wellness all-natural products, 
from weight loss, supplements, energy enhancers, body toning, longer and stronger hair, and so much more. Do you like coffee? Well, they even have coffee that'll help you drop some pounds. And who doesn't want to drop a few pounds? Go check her out at her online store at lauramoreau.itworks.com today. That's lauramoreau.itworks.com. Like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash TV. You can follow me on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash TV. Subscribe to our YouTube page. It's youtube.com slash TV. Also, guys, don't forget, you can find us now on Odyssey. That's odyssey.com. It's at Alan Mosley TV or search It's Too Late with Alan Mosley. Don't just complain about not having a free speech platform. Go and support one. As well as, if you're more of a listener than a watcher, you can go to your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Thanks to Anchor FM. We're now on all of those platforms. Thanks to Anchor FM. That is Anchor FM slash Alan Mosley TV. Sherry, you having a problem there? <laughs> Yeah. Sherry, Sherry, you know what the problem with you is, Sherry, is that you you we we're sitting here doing the show, and then you leave for like two weeks, and I have to bring just like between you and me, I got to bring just the dregs of society in here. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna name any names like Suzanne and Dave and Mary, but we, I mean, I'm I'm reaching to the very bottom of the barrel here when Sherry voluntary is out of town. So Sherry, you got a final thought? <laughs> Don't bother kids. It's it's a tall mountain to climb, but it's worth it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't screw kids. Guys, thank you so much, and we will see you next week.